Good morning. Happy Wednesday. Good morning, everybody. So I am so excited to have our special guest today. I've been dying to do this. I'm really, really excited to introduce you guys to Lynn Burnett. Lynn Burnett is um, a friend, a colleague, a teammate that I have known for many, many years, and we just can't wait to share everything about Lynn, and I know so many of our past clients, current clients, are going to be excited to watch this as well. So this is Lynn Burnett with Keller Williams in Charleston, South Carolina. Good morning, Lynn. How are you? Good morning. I am so awesome. It's fabulous here. Well, good. I was sharing with Jennifer. We're, we are having a little bit of a stormy day. So if you hear a clap of thunder, sorry about that. That's we can do. <laughs> <That's> okay. <laughs> yep. Have y'all had storms all week there? It, it started raining um, yesterday and it's it seems like we're on something with that storm that just came through Florida because it's coming in bands of super heavy rain and wind and thunderstormy and so it's been kind of crazy. It's supposed to be like that most of the week. So yeah, ours was a oh, good. big storm came through last night in the middle of the mm -hmm. night. Lise, did you hear that? I did. And my backyard's covered in um, debris, like sticks. And I got to get mm -hmm. out there and clear it out. Home ownership. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so Lynn, tell us, um, how has your summer been? Have you had any fun trips, any fun things that you've done? I have been so, it's been a crazy spring and summer. So I've been to Florida twice. Steve and I celebrated our 30th year anniversary in Aww. May. And so we spent time with some, two of our other friend couples that we've been friends with. Uh, one of them I've been friends with since fifth grade. Um, we spent time in Marathon, Florida, uh, celebrating our anniversaries. And um, so I've been to Florida twice. Uh, and then we went to the lake with um, that same group of people and all of our kids. It's a vacation we've been doing for 25 years. Crazy. Um, wow. And so we were, we were at the lake. We were at uh, Lake Kiwi this year. Uh, and then we we're headed to the lake with some clients from Charlotte that turned into be dear, very dear friends. Cindy and Tom are going to their lake house this weekend. And then we've got um, a stream of people coming in over the next couple of months. So. Oh, busy. good. Busy, but so good. Busy. Yep. Yeah. And Love lots it. of water activities. <laughs> That's well, you know, it's a good like, water activities around here are good, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, well, absolutely. Well, tell, tell us a little bit about how um, you and Jennifer got connected. So I met Jennifer for the first time when I um, came to the Ballantine office, probably in 20. I don't know, maybe 2015, Jennifer, does that sound right? Um, and um, anyway, just she was a team, I was a team at the time and um, definitely a great collaborator, um, part of uh, some groups that we were masterminding in, that kind of stuff. And um, always felt connected to her when it came time for me to um, leave Charlotte and I needed to merge my business with somebody and interviewed a lot of people. And what I came to realize is there are very few people who did business like I did and very few people who care about the client in the business um, the way that I did. And Jennifer was an absolute perfect match along those lines. That's great. You know, it's funny thinking back, like, you know, we had mastermind groups with, you know, other like sized teams like we had. And then I, I love to tell the story of how we went to, it was met, no, it's family reunion. It was the big yeah. KW convention in Las Vegas. And you and I were roommates. Little did I know that it was an interview, right? Like you were checking me out. <laughs> well, I didn't realize it was an interview you, either. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so that's always so funny. I didn't even that realize I didn't realize that was an interview until right. you were talking about. Do you remember your um your listing in Baden Lake? Uh-huh. Like mm -hmm. a long way away from there. And you'd had it for a while, but the lady wanted you to drive out there for something. And you're like, okay, I'll do it. I'll go out there on Tuesday. It's it's a lot. There's no house, there's no nothing. And I'm like, okay, if she's willing to drive that far for a lot that's the person I'm looking for do you remember who our first um listing was no who was it Norma oh yes 
yes, you're right. And, you know, that's the thing is like all of these great clients, even, you know, the Browns were the, the family that had the lot listing at Baden Lake, which we finally got it sold, but dear, dear yes. friends now. And, you know, and then Norma, oh my gosh. Yes. Yep. And even uh, Anna got attached to that one because we just, we love our clients, don't we? Mm -hmm. You do. And that was the whole reason I brought that one up was, um, you know, the whole transitioning of my team over to somebody else and my dear clients that had been so good to me um, and making sure that I got them the right fit. Um, that was like the perfect setting because that one needed a lot of handholding and there are not that many agents that would have taken the time and the efforts that your team did, mainly Anna. Anna really bonded with her quite well and um, would go sit with her and have coffee when somebody else would be in the house just because it made her scared or nervous. And there's just, there's not a lot of agents out there that would do that kind of thing. I would have, and I did. Um, and I think that's part of the reason uh, that the transition was so successful. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm grateful to you for sure. Um, so tell us a little bit about your background, Lynn. How, what did you do before you got into real estate? How did you get into real estate? I spent 21 years in medicine. Um, I was an ultrasound tech trained. I, I actually worked clinical for a couple of years and then worked for a company that made ultrasound equipment for about 10 years, did a number of different jobs for them. And then um, after having a child decided that I'd rather be home more than gone more. So I um, transitioned into um, working for the AIUM, which is just a place that accredited ultrasound labs across the country, ultimately then back into clinical. Um, and so um, right after we, I got into clinical, I was probably doing a high risk OB for about four years. And then Dave and I decided to move to Charlotte, just we were living in DC and just wanted a better life for the kids. So moved to Charlotte, uh, worked a little bit in Charlotte for um, ultrasound and just realized that with the husband that traveled and two kids that were small, um, medicine is not predictable. Like you can't say, okay, I work nine to five and I get off at five. If you get a bad patient in, you're off at whatever time you get off. And with kids in daycare and a husband not there, it was very tough. And I'd always wanted to do real estate. And when we made the transition, we made it so that I didn't have to work. So um, it was easy enough then to make the transition at that point. And for me, I loved ultrasound because I got to take care of patients and I got to take care of their um, most prized possession and, and their, their babies. Um, and I felt like going into real estate, I still get to take care of people and I get to take care of their most prized possession this time just financially. I feel like people who are in the healthcare industry, it's such a nice natural transition to get into real estate because it is. You truly care about your patients and the people that you're working with. It's kind of like me being a teacher as a background. I yep. cared about those children and their families so much that it naturally transitions. It's in our makeup, right? Yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. It's the, my most I... passion, the thing I'm most passionate about is people. So for sure. How long have you been in real estate, Lynn? Oh my gosh, since 2000 and September 2004. So I'm coming up on, what's that? 17 years, 18 years. Yeah. yeah. Wow. A while. Yeah. And you still, you still it love like it? like just yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> like I seventeen still love years. it. Because, well, the interesting thing is, and Jennifer will attest to this too, is the bonus about this job is, it never gets old. Number one, you're dealing with the public. So every client is different. Every client need is different. And number two, the industry never stays the same. I mean, who could have ever thought? We thought last March, we're all honing back and oh my gosh, this is going to be the worst thing that ever happened. And look at what happened in like the next two or three months. It's been the craziest time ever. Right. Even, even I was there in the downturn and it's been crazier than that. Wow. Yeah. Speaking of that, is Charleston, is the Charleston market as nuts as it is here in Charlotte? Yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, normally we, at this stage of the game, we would have about five, I mean, last year, even last year, which was low in inventory, but not as low as we are this year, we had 4,500 homes on the market to date at the same date. And we have 1,900 now Gosh, in the entire wow. MLS. It's, 
it's the craziest, absolute craziest. So it is a busy market. We're still winning contracts and getting people under contract and getting them homes. It's just about knowing how to do it and understanding what they need, want, and then knowing about how to write the offer to get what they want. For sure. Do you feel like a majority of who you're working with right now, are they looking for primary homes or are they second home or investment properties? So it's, uh, it's an interesting question because I feel like the majority of our business is investment in second home, like in general, that therefore it makes it a much longer buying cycle. So someone might come to me this year and say, hey, I'm interested in getting home. And it could be three years before they actually pull the trigger on doing some of that. Um, this year, I've done a little bit more local moves, like people either moving from one place to the next here locally, or people coming in that are buying primary homes. But for the majority of our business, almost to a T for everybody, a lot of it is all second homes and investment properties. Yeah. Makes it a little harder per, to predict than it is yeah. was, than it was in Charlotte. Yeah, absolutely. And a it, lot of fun. Kind of change your thought process along the way, you know? Right. And, it, and it's fun. I mean, it, it's, for me, it's different. So it, uh, you ask about getting bored, you never get bored, right? Cause it's always changing. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, I was going to ask you the question about what your favorite thing about real estate is. And I already know it's the people and it's helping people. Cause that's just your heart. What would you yep. say your favorite thing about selling real estate or about your Charleston market would be? Um, I, so the, we have a very casual nature here, even in the real estate business. So it's something that makes me love it. And something that, as you know, my personality drives me a little crazy, but I do love that, you know, things are a little more relaxed here. Um, and when people are buying second homes, it's just a different process. You know, the, the intensity is still just as high because it's a lot of money. But the process by which they're looking for it is usually a little, they're usually happier and, you know, there's not the stress of I have to have it kind of a thing. So, um, but yeah, my favorite part is just the people. It's always been the people um, and it doesn't really matter where you are. The business is definitely different down here than it is in Charlotte, um, but I love it and I've learned to um, like it and I've learned to work around it. You know, finding vendors was a little difficult, but thankfully at the stage of the game, I've got some really good vendors on board that, you know, were much like my people in Charlotte. So I feel pretty fortunate. That's great. Yep. I didn't, I didn't even think about restarting your whole vendor list. That's a whole nother, I mean, that's a whole nother battle when you relocate to a new market. Yeah, it is. And it's a little harder here just because, again, we're of that casual nature. So um, mm -hmm. if I can, if they can work three days to surf for four, they will. Or mm -hmm. fight, <laughs> get, fight, surf, whatever, they fishing, whatever. So it's just a whole different approach, right? So they'll say, yeah, I'll be there on Friday. And they might show up next Friday, not the Friday they said they were going to show up. So it just, you have to. You, you can either embrace it or you can just spend your life pissed off. I've chose to embrace it. And I've got really good vendors now that if I call them and they tell me they're going to be there on Wednesday, they will get there Wednesday, sometimes at midnight, but they will get there on Wednesday. So I'm going to embrace it. <laughs> on those lines. Well, it's just that the time. really good ones that I found are so busy. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're so busy, but they, like I said, they're really good people. And I've been very fortunate because I feel like in our industry, like what we offer our clients and our friends that hopefully will become clients one day is that vendor list is the ability that we have to vet them through inspections and going through, you know, people that need help with HVAC, all that stuff. We get the chance to vet them by referring them and using them ourselves. And most people as a general rule, don't do that on a regular basis. So I feel like, you know, that's part of what we offer is to be that resource for people. I agree. Yeah. You and Jennifer are very similar. Just in this, <laughs> just in this interview, I'm like, I understand why they merged. This is making more sense. <laughs> yep. I love it. Um, yep. Now tell us, Lynn, why it's so important in the Charleston market right now with such limited inventory to have a great realtor and you can't go do it on your own. Yeah. So it's, it's fascinating right now, really, the whole market in general, right? So, 
you have to be on a property. Like you have to have somebody setting you up on an MLS search. If you're waiting for a Zillow to send you something, you've missed the window to purchase. Like if it hits the market this morning, you've got to have an appointment this, this morning or else it's going to be sold by this afternoon. I was trying to looking at a property even for myself yesterday for investment, made an appointment at 11 for two o'clock. It got canceled at one o'clock. It was already under contract. So if you are not having somebody that is watching that market for you on a daily basis and sending those, that stuff to you as soon as it comes on the market, you're already behind the eight ball. So that's number one. Number two, um, the process, like getting under contract is the easy part. It's getting from contract to close. That's really where the work comes in. But to get them under contract right now is also, it's a strategic plan. You have to have a strategic plan in order to be the one that's picked because they're picking between you and potentially, and some of our offers have been 10 others. So you have to have great conversations with the client about what the strategies are, how you get, sorry, what the strategies are, how you get that um, solved, and then what's their need and want for the property? Like, what do we need to do to make you the winner? And it's, it's challenging and a lot of fun. So yeah. Yeah. I have a, another question that goes off of that. And it's something I've always wondered because every time I come to Charleston, I think about all these old historic houses or things that are close to the water. Like how do you navigate inspections and so forth with a house that's like 150, 200 years old? <laughs> So it's a little crazy. So the inspection process down here are really long for my due diligence. Just the due diligence contract again, I really do. We, we track a lot of dates here. That's the other reason you want to have a real estate agent. There's like probably seven different dates in the contract that you have to follow along and make sure that you stay within the contract and don't fall out in default. Um, but uh, most of our people are accepting repair requests only. So you are going through full inspection report and then, but the contract is great in that there's like eight major systems that it covers for repair requests. So that part makes it really good. Um, but we're in a position right now where you're, you're doing the inspections on those 150 year old homes and there's a laundry list of stuff coming up and the sellers are saying, no, thanks. Right. No, thank you. No, bye bye. Right. You know, so it's definitely a challenge. Right now, even though they're in default, they'll give you your earnest money back. They're like, oh, just take your earnest money. That's good. I'll go on to the next one who really wants it bad enough not to worry about that. We're seeing a lot of, I don't know about you guys. Are you guys seeing waived inspections there? Some waived inspections or we're just going to do it for informational purposes and we promise we won't ask for anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's what that we're kind of seeing some waived inspections. We're seeing waived appraisals and that kind of stuff. So but, but it's more difficult. Like you can't go into buying a hundred year old home and expecting it to be like your brand new Lenar home that somebody bought, right. your friend brought down the street. It's not the same. It's not going to be in that kind of condition. It's just well, I was thinking it like you've got crawl spaces, you have oh, wiring, Lord. plumbing, like Lord. nothing like what we see in Charlotte where people are like, there's a little speck of mold in the crawl space, you know, and then sure. they want it encapsulated. Oh, no. Yeah. What's well, fascinating, I mean, a lot of things fall out of here, fall out here because of crawl space issues, um, which kind of brings, you know, when I list, I try to do a pre-inspection in part to avoid that because you're right, any kind of mold or anything in the crawl space makes people a little freaked out, which makes me a little freaked out too, I gotta, I gotta be honest. Um, but if we can get that managed ahead of time, then it makes it better. But in those old houses, and you know, it floods downtown. I mean, it was flooded yesterday. I just driving across town and it's flooded everywhere. My daughter's working down there and she's like, I am literally trapped <sighs> down here. I cannot get out there. I'm like, all right, well, hang on. The water will recede. You're not going to be trapped down there forever. So <laughs> right. you got to imagine if, if you're trapped, she gets trapped down there in a, in a heavy rain. What do those crawl spaces look like? Yeah. So you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Some creepy crawl. Right. Well, tell us something. What's something you miss about living in Charlotte? You've been in Charleston now for three plus years. What What are the things you mm -hmm. miss about old home? <laughs> the people. 
Yeah. I miss my friends. I miss my, I had a, a great realtor network there. So I miss those people. I miss my friends, friends. Um, and I have to say the shopping is a lot better. The food, we, we do a pretty good job on food down here. Um, and we do a pretty good job on the outdoor activities, but um, the shopping, eh, it's okay. So the um, stores, crazy. Yeah. yeah. You mean the Forever 21 on King Street doesn't, doesn't get you to do it for it's, your shopping? It's, clo it's closed. Forever oh. 21 closed. Wow. Huh. I can't I keep up with Charleston. Said Target. I think somebody said Target was going in there, but yeah. Are you closed. serious? Wow. That's what I heard, which is so sad. Yeah, yeah that is. It'll change the um, face of King Street. Yeah, sure. it's, it's changed a lot. My mom grew up in Charleston and every time I go back, oh, um, it's cool. different. Mm -hmm. Yep. It's crazy. Um, now, Lynn, I, other say, than, I think uh, that from, Oh, go ahead. I was just gonna say, I think the problem is they've raised the rent so much that the forever 21s and stuff just can't afford to stay there. Yeah. yeah. Sad. It is sad. It is sad. Mm -hmm. But it's the way of the world, right? I mean, if you look at all the changes that have gone on in Charlotte in the last 18 years, it's just kind of amazing. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, Lynn, what's, wh what's a good way for people to get in contact with you when they're moving to the Charleston mm -hmm. area? So they can can, the easiest way probably is to call or text. My um, cell number is 704-650-3472. Um, same as it was when I was there. Um, and I do a lot of um, people, I do a lot of referral work from Charlotte to Charleston, helping them find a second home. In fact, it was like 90% of my business last year. Wow. That's I all know. those great Thank connections you. you have, all the people that love you so much here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, great agents that refer it's been, it's been it's been really good it's really been kind of fun to watch how this business um developed versus when I started in Charlotte with nobody that I knew there and, and how that developed mm -hmm. so it's just been kind of an interesting thing to watch mm -hmm. yeah so cool so we end yeah. our um interviews every week with something that you're grateful for we think it's important to really just start our day with thinking of all the wonderful things we've been blessed with. So we're going to let you start and it can be something that you're grateful for like in life or just for the week or today. Right. Um, probably um, having merged with your team is probably one of my biggest grateful things. Um, that's kind of an overall life thing. Um, I feel like it was, it was so fascinating and very fun to watch and fun to unfold and all that good stuff. So that part, Definitely. Um, and as far as just like um, day to day, you know what, I'm just grateful to have you be a business with you and to have a business here that's thriving and all the partnerships that I've been able to create. Yeah, that's great. I feel the feelings are yeah. mutual. And I was just thinking about the same thing. Like, I truly am grateful for the relationships that we're able to form in this business. And just the fact of being able to mastermind and share ideas. And then that formed a fantastic friendship between us, which, you know, I just, I'm grateful for our team and relationships and truly grateful for you. Thank you. We're all going to cry. crying. I know. <laughs> no more so crying. Sweet. I get enough of that with the, over the dog. So I'm all oh good. Oh my gosh. I know. Cry it out. I know. It's all right. Yeah. He's in a better place. Yeah. So we're good. No more tears. <laughs> no. What are you grateful for today? Um, mine, I know we talked as a team on Monday about starting to watch the news more. So I've been really, really oh, watching that up this week. And wow, I can honestly say I'm so grateful for where we live and the freedom we have because of everything going on. Um, so it's been, it's almost like you have to take a step back and and say, why are you complaining about this? You know, you have, you're so lucky and you're so blessed. So definitely grateful for the freedom and where, and where we live. Yeah, that's so true. Yeah. Lynn on Monday, I, we talked about like keeping up with things that are going around us because we're all so positive. We try to avoid the news sometimes. Right. So it doesn't bring us down, but <laughs> yeah. you gotta, you gotta be somewhat knowledgeable and I feel like we totally are but yeah please don't watch yeah. CNN all day please I know 
I come well, to ice cream truck just crying from the devastations in the world. Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> um, I, I would say I have always watched the news in the morning while I'm showering and stuff because you don't want to get caught number one when you're with a client and have no idea when they say, oh my gosh, isn't that terrible about the people in Afghanistan? And you're going, huh? That's, that's not a good place to be, right? And then like our daughter, Holly, who's at college and they've had a recall on some kind of lettuce, which I know she eats lettuce every day. Hey, Hall, do you know anything about the, the recall on lettuce? No, what's going on? It's been going on for three days. She just called that. I'm like, are you eating lettuce? Yeah. What, what kind am I not supposed to eat? <laughs> Honey, you either need to watch the news or get an app or some kind of something that you like know the daily stuff that's going on. So you're Absolutely. right. It's like, you can't, you can't let it get inside your head but you do need to watch it for like current events, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So overall, we're grateful for positivity and positive people, right? Yes, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And we get rid of what, we get rid of the ones that aren't because it definitely just a drag, right? Absolutely. No one wants that. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you so much, Lynn, for joining us this morning. I know that so many people are going to be excited to see your face. Um, and we're excited to, to share you with everybody. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. It's been fun. I enjoyed it. And everybody, if you need an agent in the Charleston area, Lynn Burnett is the lady to call because I can't think of anybody that would take better care of you. And she's top notch, top notch for sure. So we'll put your contact info in the Thank comments. You. And I'm sure that you'll be hearing from 100 people looking for investment mm -hmm. or uh, beach properties. <laughs> I, I love it. I can't wait. Thank you so much. All right. Y'all have a great rest of the day. Bye. Bye. Bye.